today I'm at Ostermere, and Ostermere is on the east coast of New South Wales, about uh, an hour south of Sydney. And what I wanted to have a look at was the Tungara Coal Measures. And the Tungara Coal Measures sits on top of the Wilton Formation. This particular deposit was deposited near the end of the Permian, so about 249 million years ago. So basically what we can see is that the Tongara Coal Measures sits on top of the Wilton Formation and I've done a few videos about the Wilton Formation and reading some of the various farve layers and water deposited sediment that can be seen. But basically what you can see if we just have a look at this layer here is we can see various, various layers of light and dark sediment. And that has to do with the amount of oxidisation that was occurring at the time and the way that the oxidization um, in one instance may have occurred is to do with water depth. So the greater the water depth, the less oxygen available to break down the, the iron sulfide, so the darker material um, that was being deposited in the mud sediment. And if you can see some of the red layers, um, what that indicates is that the water level was lower. So those darker iron sulfides um, would have had a chance to react with oxygen and form rust, um, so iron oxide. It would have had a chance to have that, um, that process occur, that oxidization process occur. So basically the Wilton Formation, the layer that lies below this Tongara Coal Measures um, is fresh water or brackish water deposited sediment. So if you went back, what you would have seen is a volcanic arc system that would have been um, in existence um, from this location right here. If you moved around to the area of Jeringong and Kayama, you would also have seen um, a few volcanoes um, that would have either have been present or been forming, as there's been various um, different volcanoes um, that had formed during that period um, at the time and um, as this would have been a very flat um, area due to how the sediment has been deposited that you can see in the Wilton Formation, um, you would have possibly been able to see all the way all the way around pretty much in a 360 degree angle for the entire length of the Sydney Basin. If we have a look, what is interesting before we get into having a look at the, um, the coal measures itself are these tuffaceous layers and these even exist um, before the peat um, started to accumulate. So that tells us that somewhere nearby, possibly ha as mentioned either um, off around there off the coast, current coast or down south around Kayama and Jeringong, there would have been volcanoes and as those volcanoes spewed out material such as um, you know magma and things like that that would have formed some of the basalt that can be seen in that area um, ash would have also been spreading out and this would have accumulated um, on top of either the the peat and um, or on top of this um, silty mudstone but as we can see the layers of tough material is quite thick and that would indicate that quite a lot of um, material was being extruded from the um, from the volcanoes at at the time. So moving up, what we can see is some larger examples of some tough ashbourne deposits um, on top of this coal. And what's interesting in one of the tough um, ashfall deposits is the the um, yellow that can be seen and the yellow is associated with sulfur so when that particular deposit was being um, laid down there would have been um, a pretty nasty atmosphere or um, environment at the time and I'd say it probably would have had a large impact on pretty much all living things in a relatively um, large area um, around whatever volcano was spewing out um, spewing out that ashbourne deposit. Peat is deposited and accumulates at one millimetre a year and this coal is about 3.3 metres thick and has a compaction ratio of about 10 to 1. So that indicates that this particular 
seam of coal here um, would be about 33,000 years of um, deposition or the, the layering or the, the amount of time it took for this peat to be accumulated. So what we've got is quite a large time span and at the time there was cool climate peat swamps that um, were mostly made up of um, seed ferns and plants such as Glossopteris. And throughout the various layers below it and also above it until we get to the top of the Bulai Coal Measures, we can see various examples of Glossopteris. A large portion of the various coal seams is believed to have been made up of the direct plant uh, material of Glossopteris. If you want to check out the Tongara Coal Measures, it's, um, you can find it if you just walk along to the north end of Ostermere Beach, uh, which is located on the east coast of New South Wales, Australia. And uh, thanks for watching. If you have any comments, please post below.